What's up friends and family? Uh, today we're going to talk about something that is both beneficial for your snake's reproductive cycle and could also extend the life of your snake. Now I'm talking of course about hibernation. Now if you breed North American snakes, you already know about hibernation because you need to cool down your snakes, send them through a period of winter dormancy in order to really get the fertilization that they need, uh, both for the males and females, to, to produce uh, viable gametes that are gonna be able to reproduce. However, if you're a pet keeper, you may not know that reptiles, being ectothermic animals, are going to naturally hibernate during the winter. And if you think about it, it totally makes sense. Snakes need heat for activity, so what are they going to do during the winter? They're going to find a cold, uh, not cold, they're going to find a nice, stable, calm, uh, relaxing burrow, usually deep in a rock crevice or underground, where the temperature is going to stay pretty even, but it's not going to be hot, and it's not going to be too cold, and they're going to stay there throughout winter. Now, as you can see behind me, it's pretty green out still. I live in Southern California. We have a pretty moderate climate. So snakes out here, they may just broomate, uh, excuse me, I might say broomate, it's hibernate now, uh, but they might hibernate under a board, under a rock, not too deep, maybe in just a shallow crevice. But if you go up further north, uh, the garter snakes of Minnesota, the bull snakes, uh, some of the animals, the, you know, the northern pines that live in really cooler areas, uh, some of your mountain king snakes, animals that live up where it's really, really cold, they're going to have to dig down a lot deeper and find deeper crevices, uh, wells, uh, those sort of things. Popular place to find uh, hibernaculums of, of animals, usually even kept together, sometimes even multiple species, including king snakes, which are common snake eaters. They'll all hibernate in the same areas. But anyways, let's get uh, skip the natural history lesson because we could do a whole episode on that. What I want to talk about to you is how you can hibernate your snakes at home. There's a few simple ways to do it. Uh, I will show you my method, which involves a wine cooler, um, but there's other methods including keeping them outside, keeping them in a garage, or putting them in a cooler with some heat on it. So I'll, I'll explain those examples to you and I'll show you how I do it for mine. Of course, your snake may show signs that it wants to hibernate before you're even ready to do it. Uh, for instance, this is Summer. Uh, he's my rosy boa. And he's going to do this. He's been doing this for the past few weeks. He's also stopped eating since uh, early September. So that's a good sign that he's already thinking about hibernation. So if your snake stops eating or is hanging out exclusively on the cool side of the enclosure, he's probably giving you clues that he's ready to hibernate. So one of the very first things that you're going to do is... Just change the temperature. You don't have to change the lights or anything like that. So today's November 1st, so I haven't fed uh, summer, like I said, in a, uh, a few weeks. So uh, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to lower the temps. Now, three and four, these are the two different bulbs uh, in his enclosure. That's the halogen, that's the DP projector. Um, I've already lowered this a little bit just to kind of decrease temps. Normally they're the same. But three and four, that's summer's enclosure. So what I'm going to do now that it's November 1st is if he hasn't stopped eating already, now is the time you would stop feeding him altogether. Don't give him another meal. You do not want a snake to have food in its belly when it's going into hibernation because the food will not digest. And undigested food inside the belly turns into rotted food. Rotted food becomes full of bacteria. Um, it, it can be either a blockage or it can become a sort of uh, toxic situation inside their body. So you don't want that. So first thing we'll do, we'll change the temps down. So day temp right now is like at 84. So we'll drop it down to 78. And we'll do the same for the DP projector. There we go. Close enough. There we go, guys. If you don't already have herp stats, 
uh, I highly recommend this brand of thermostat. It makes life so much easier and so much more in control. And that's it. I'm going to leave it there for one week. So at this point, it's been a week at the lower temps. Uh, as you can see, not much has changed in the enclosure. Uh, Summer still stays there on the cool side of the tank. Now he's poking his head up because he sees all this activity. He's interested in what I'm filming. But he's been over there uh, for the last month, basically. He hangs out there almost exclusively. He'll spend one or two days there under the lamp, which is under those rocks and under the ceramic tile, uh, which is a great little thing I found just uh, in the neighborhood. Just someone's roof tile fell and broke off. So I washed it up, sterilized it, baked it, and put it in the, in the enclosure. And it's been great. I've seen him basking on and under it. But that's during the summer. Right now, he's enjoying the cool side of his enclosure. As you can see, I'm hanging out over there. That's it. I also shortened the length of the lights, so they come on an hour later and go off an hour sooner. So he's getting used to shorter light cycles. It doesn't hurt that he's also right out here next to the window. So he does get uh, sort of a, a clue as to what the, the natural world is doing. So I always try and follow it. Thankfully, I'm you know not too far from his native home range anyway. So the light cycles that he gets out here are not too different from the light cycles he gets in his enclosure. All right, so just like before, we're going to go to three and four and we're going to lower the temps. So instead of 78, we're going to drop temps all the way down to 70. And that's essentially turning them off because the room temp is, is usually right around 70 degrees. And then I still have a nighttime drop on here, which you can do with these herb stats, which I don't have shown. But the, the nighttime temps are, are beneath the room temp. So when the room gets down to about 66 at night, and sometimes when it gets real cold in here, maybe 64. So I, I just drop the temps down lower than that, and that way I know it's not giving off any heat at night. Yeah, so let's move it back up to 70. Not too far. And then that's that. So he said one week at 78, gonna give him one week at 70. Um, and then I'll show you what I do next. So you've dropped temps twice. You'd lower the amount of time that your snake is getting sunlight uh, or, or light from its enclosure. But room temps still aren't getting as low as you want overnight. <clears throat> and you'd like to lower temps just a little bit more. Well, it's cold outside. It's a little under 70 degrees today. So I'll show you the simplest trick in my arsenal for brumating, excuse me, hibernating snakes. And uh, this step is real easy. That's it. Open up the window, get some fresh air in there. Smells good in the room that way. And it, uh, it also helps lower the temps. Keep it open overnight. Uh, instead of temps dropping down to about 66, 68 in the room, it uh, gets down to about 63. So a few extra degrees drop uh, in these fall, month, fall days preparing for winter. It's really nice getting what your, your desired effect. Okay, so at this point, you've had a week at 78, a week at 70 degrees. You've lowered the, the amount of light that you're getting. And now you've had a week with the open windows. So we've got one more week before I'm actually going to prepare to put them into their final brumation. And this is the next step. Again, really tricky here. So pay close attention. Reach back here. And you turn off the lights. And that's it. So he's going to get a week with no light whatsoever. He's still going to get light in the room. As you can see, there's still uh, ambient day and night light. But he's going to get a lot less stimulation from that electric radiation of the lights in his room. Also, uh, sorry, we're going to have to find a new place for these house plants. They were borrowing light from the Jungle Dawn, these sensitive plants, which are really cool. If you ever get these in your home, you can see... They move a lot, which I just think is super cool. They're very dramatic, but I love those plants. Anyway, so that's it. They're going to spend a week off there with no light. Now it's going to be time to actually get the hibernation 
uh, set up ready and to get summer ready for hibernation. I'm gonna show you how I do that. Okay, so I got summer out. Uh, it's uh, at this point, it's a little after Thanksgiving. We're coming up on December 1st, and I am ready to finally put him down to sleep for hibernation. So he's essentially been going into that hibernation stage uh, this whole time, but now it's going to be official. I'm actually going to lower the temps. So uh, there's a few ways you can do it. And if you live in a place like Southern California where the weather is relatively mild, um, you could put him in a garage. Put him in a place, usually if you have a like a laundry room that's between the garage and the outside where it stays cool, but it doesn't get too cold, doesn't warm up much from the house, some place that's isolated from the heating and cooling of the house, that's ideal. It's like a little cave, right? Uh, or if you have a, a hot water heater closet like I do on my patio, I did that for him a year, in a year previous. What I did is I just put him in an insulated box and I put him on the patio. And it was in the in the um, area where the hot water heater is. And that was great because the temps, even though we had some weird days where it got up to 70, for the most part, it was about a high of 60. Um, but at night, it got down to about 40 a lot of nights. So I was a little bit concerned because it's a little bit colder than I like it. That's why I put them in an insulated box. If you live in a part of the country where it gets a lot cooler, what you can do is just take an insulated box or a cooler, and right? that's going to be your best bet. Um, just line it with heat tape, and you can set a thermostat for 50 degrees, 55 degrees, whatever species, whatever your species uh, hibernates at best. So, best way to do that is look at natural history, see what where they like to hibernate. If if it's a really cold weather snake, you're probably looking at 50 degrees. A lot of the montane king snakes like 50 degrees. Uh, my rosy boas, you know a little bit uh, more lowland and uh, the desert. So 55 is a good temp for him, but 50 works as well too, if you gotta mix them together. So what I got, um, it was uh, I asked for a wine cooler one year for Christmas. And it's not because I drink a lot of wine, I don't, uh, but it works perfect for this. So a normal refrigerator gets way too cold. The coldest setting is about 38, 40 degrees, and that's just too cold for me. But a wine cooler, the lowest setting is about 55 degrees. So that works perfect for me. So that's what I have here. You can see. Just a simple wine cooler. Putting a few stickers, I gotta put a few more. 
and you know these shelves they remove which is nice uh, so i can put more snakes in and i will i'll have i'll have another one right next to to summer here but for this video i'm just showing the one you take the bin that you made uh summer's there in his hide hiding plop it in close the door and that's it now i know what you're thinking there's not a lot of air in there so couldn't he suffocate yes you can uh, Reptiles in general, but especially snakes, especially when they're hibernating, their metabolism is slowed way brown. So where you and I are breathing all day and all night, his breath is much slower. First off, his, his lung is like a tube that long, right? So it's, uh, it's not the same kind of bag that you or I would have in there. It's, it's a small thing. Uh, second, instead of breathing constantly, it's deep breath in, hold for a long time deep breath out so it's very very reduced slow down metabolism and there's studies out that say that that's actually what helps snakes live longer snakes that hibernate uh, because they slow their metabolism down and they have that period of fasting it allows their body to recover from the stress of the the high metabolism it's like a, a, a deep sleep helps it repair and, and, and restore um, important body functions uh, but also it simply just adds life. So imagine a battery, right? If you turn something off, it lasts longer. So it's it's similar principle. I know that's extremely simplified, but if you have a battery life of 20 hours and you let it run for 20 hours straight, well, then you get 20 hours of it. But if you use it for one, one hour a day or 10 hours a day, then you get two days. You just double the, the life of it. So same principle applies for brumation. Uh, let them sleep during the winter. You're going to save money on food because they don't eat you're going to save money on electricity because you don't turn the lights on even though i'm going to turn the lights back on because as you see i use it for house plants and the enclosure can grow and all that stuff so uh, i'll keep you know i'll save money on the uv bulb at least but uh, the uh, the jungle dawn is going to stay on for for the plants um but a lot of pets you know maybe not have that you'll save money on the lighting you'll save money on the heating you'll save money on the food so it's it's great the only hard part is saying goodbye to him for winter but because you have to uh, open this up for air you get to see him every now and then so every other day or at least every day if you can but at least every other day just come over open it up let the air cy cycle in and out and that's that i've also seen folks take a uh, air pump for an aquarium and you can kind of wedge it between the the seal there and that'll work and it'll pump air directly into the the enclosure and allow sort of an exchange of, of air that way um, so i've done this the last two years haven't had any issues whatsoever with, with hibernating um you know no signs of respiratory infection and obviously uh, they woke up alive afterwards so i highly recommend it so now it's it's december 1st i'm gonna leave them in there for a few days uh, let them get used to just the the dark and the quiet and then I turn it on to its lowest setting. It's about 60 degrees. Crank it down just a little bit more. It gets down to about 55, 50, right in that range. And that's where he'll stay till, uh, till Valentine's Day. Now, rosy boas don't need a lot of water. They're, they're used to not having it. I, I, when, when I first put them in, I have that little tiny water dish in there and I fill it up. Sometimes that's all I give them. Um, usually, if, if I see it going down, um, I'll let it dry out. I'll let it stay dry and then... A little bit before it's time to wake him up which will be in February uh, so like you know after New Year I'll probably like throw a little bit more in there and, and let him have another drink but he doesn't need much he's not losing almost any water whatsoever during this time uh, so uh, there's really no need for him to to drink more of it it's not a particularly uh, dehydrated species they, they they do well without water and that's it so next time I see you guys It'll be Valentine's Day. All right, so if you're paying attention, I haven't changed the clothes. Uh, it's clearly not a, a year's worth, of, a winter's worth of progress here, but let's pretend now it's Valentine's Day. That's a good uh, time frame a lot of keepers use. It's Thanksgiving to Valentine's Day to, to keep the rosy boas. Uh, some colubrids, you know, your Montane Kings and um, cooler weather species. They like to, to sleep a little bit longer. Roses like to wake up. For this, we're just going to do the process exactly backwards. We're going to turn the wine cooler off.
keep opening it up and closing it every day. That way it gets fresh air in there. Turn the white cooler off, leave them in there for another couple of days. Um, then I'm going to move them into his enclosure uh, with the lights off. From there, I turn the lights on. From there, I raise temps 10 degrees, raise temps 10 degrees a week later. Um, and then once he's had full temp for about a week, that's when I'm going to offer food. Let that metabolism slowly build up. And that's it, guys. That's how you hibernate your snakes.